So we failed a, with a couple of different solvents to successfully recrystallize the tryptamine and all the solvent has evaporated so we have our tryptamine back again. And I found a paper in the literature that said that tryptamine can be recrystallized from just pure light petroleum boiling point 60 to 80 which is effectively the same thing as hexanes which boils at 69 degrees. Um, light petroleum is probably a mixture of more isomers than this hexanes. Uh, and therefore cheaper. So we could try to recrystallize it from pure hexane since it didn't work from the hexane chloroform mixture or from the pet ether uh, uh, ethanol mixture. So I put a boiling stone in here and I'm going to just boil some hexane turning on the hot plate. I'll get about 20 mils of hexane boiling. And I'm going to add another boiling stone to our tryptamine mixture. And we'll give this one a shot. And I'm not sure if we'll need a bigger flask uh, to get it to dissolve in pure hexane because last time it didn't seem to be particularly soluble in it. But maybe it's just a matter of leaving it for a little bit longer to get it to behave itself. So we'll get that hexane boiling and then we'll just gradually add it to here and hopefully get all this to dissolve. And if that works, we have the other sample of tryptamine from the first isolation. I mean, they give a shot since that's a considerably nicer kind of white powder. See if we can get a better yield. I've turned this up to about 150 on the hot plate so we can get that boiling fairly quickly. One of the problems with uh, taking recrystallization solvents directly from the literature is usually they're working on a much larger scale and sometimes the right solvent on a larger scale is not the right solvent on the smaller scale because it turns out to be too soluble and the amount of volume that you would need on the tiny scale that we're working with is just impractically small. So you need a solvent that it's significantly less soluble in when you're working on a small scale. And as we've discovered, if they don't tell you what the ratio is uh, for a mixed solvent system, it's sometimes hard to come up with a good system. If we can get white crystals out of this kind of orangey powder, that would be an achievement. The tryptamine has been gradually decomposing, probably oxidizing in the air over the last week or so. So that's starting to get warm. I'm going to take one pipette full and just kind of run it down the side just so we don't char it. A second pipette full. I'm going to take at least that to dissolve it. And then you can get those boiling side by side. You can see that it's starting to bubble a little bit at the boiling stone. boiling stone as usual is providing a surface for those bubbles to form at so it doesn't build up too much gas and then explode out. So this one's boiling nicely. Just want to swirl that around. It looks like it's going to take a couple more pipe full at least. that 
foil. Now I can turn my hot plate down a little bit. One potential complication is it may be that the impurity, which is causing the orange color, is less soluble in hexane than the tryptamine itself. And that would mean it would be difficult for us to tell when we've added enough solvent. Although it does look like it's going a little bit colored. Turn the hot plate down a little bit more. Add another pipette full. And it might even be worth it to reach in there with one of these small glass stirring rods. Kind of scrape that material off the sides. its ability to dissolve. Bang that out of there. So it's not stuck. Increase the surface area a little bit. This flask is getting kind of hot. Looks like the solution is largely colorless, but there's some persistent orange stuff that's down at the bottom that's not dissolving. It could be the amine oxide. Those are often strongly colored.
So we're giving that a good stir and trying to kind of crunch up the solid. that there's something that's not soluble in petroleum ether. Not to any appreciable degree anyway. So I'm going to get that boiling again by cranking this up a bit. Since there's probably about six to seven milliliters of petroleum ether in there right now. And then I'm going to transfer it to our new flask. trying to leave the solid behind, transfer it while it's still hot and see if any crystals are going to form. And then we can add some fresh petroleum ether to the residue and see if more of it dissolves. So I'm reluctant to add more solvent just in case that solid that's not dissolving is the impurity. Unfortunately, it looks like the boiling stone's getting clogged. It's starting to build up some pressure. So that's definitely hot. And it's boiling away. transfer the supernatant and it looks like we are getting some crystals right away which would indicate that perhaps the impurity is that orange stuff. I want to transfer this fairly quickly before it cools enough that it starts precipitating. The process of dissolving the soluble material in a solvent that the insoluble material will not go into and then crystallizing it out like that is referred to as a trituration. And sometimes it's the best way to go about purifying a compound. So now I'm going to add some fresh hexane petroleum ether. I'm going to toss another boiling stone in there. And that one we're just going to let crystallize. An upside down beaker on it so it cools somewhat slowly.
it's not all going in, that's for sure. There's still some orange that's not dissolving. Wait. Now we're going to transfer that liquid and see if there's any more. This time it's not going cloudy, so maybe I got all the tryptamine out in the first batch and I got some impurity in the orange stuff. But we'll see as we cool this, we might get some more white. Definitely a lot of orange solid. Which may be tryptamine or it may not. So we'll let that cool slowly as well. <laughs> 